Hi, my name is Navdeep Kataria and I'm the Product Marketing Engineer with Android Zoo for Vector Network Analyzer. So today we are going to do a demonstration of our recently launched ONA solution which is the Optical Network Analyzer. The key components of the Optical Network Analyzer are a Network Analyzer. For demonstration purpose we will be using a 40 GHz Network Analyzer. Then we have uh, the EO moderator, which is MN4775A. So today we'll be doing the demonstration on a 850 nanometers and a 40 gigahertz system. So this is the EO modulator, which is basically from Thor Labs. And then we have our own OE module, which is characterized as per the NIST standards. So that means you have a silver standard here. Uh, what we do in our labs is that we have uh, an NIST uh, setup in which we use the golden NIST uh, photo detector and then we characterize uh, an EO modulator with that. Now because the EO modulator is being characterized as per the golden uh, image, what we do is we then connect our OE modules which actually the customers get at the end of the day. These OE modules are then characterized by those EO uh, uh, modulators. So then that means this OE module gets a standard, silver standard images, right? So that means you have the data that you're trying to characterize is almost traceable to NIST standards. About the modulator, this modulator comes from Tor Lab and it, it has an Android Zoo part number. And uh, it also comes in various options. So that means for different wavelengths, you can have different box, or if you want, you can have a tunable laser inside as well. In this particular example, uh, the, the uh, dedicated laser out and laser in portion is not there, but if the user wants to have a tunable laser and a laser out and a laser in, so that means in case you want to characterize your own lasers at the end of the day, you can use the laser in port and then uh, shoot your laser uh, to the input port of the modulator and then the optical modulated output is going to come out. right? Now, because uh, we have uh, the silver image as per NIST uh, with our own OE modules, we can actually characterize any of the EO modulators. Coming back to the definition, so as per the definition, if you have these three components with you, that means you have uh, an RF uh, VNA, you have uh, one EO modulator with you, and if you have an OE, uh, OE detector as well, that means now you can make any measurements in any of the domains. That, that means you can do EO measurements. That means you can characterize any of your uh, transmitter uh, uh, side devices. It could be a TOSA or it could be an assembly. It could be just a laser or it could be an EO modulator. So you can do that. You can also characterize uh, the receiver sites. That means uh, you can characterize photo detectors or ROSA kind of devices, on wafer devices. And then you can also characterize anything which is in between. So that means optical input and optical output. That means you can also measure OO domain as well. So you can characterize the EO, you can characterize the OE, and you can also characterize OO. Since the VNA forms an integral part of uh, this entire system, you can also do EE measurements. So that means all the four domains are covered in one go. Uh, if there is a customer who does not have all the three kind of duties, say suppose there is a customer who just wants to characterize the transmitter side, so that means they just want to characterize the EOs, right? In that case, the customer can choose maybe not to buy this EO modulator, but because he just need to character, he, he just needs a receiver characterized side, so that means he can buy a vector start and he can buy uh, uh, the OE modulator and he can characterize any of his uh, EO kind of devices. However, in case he wants to do the photo detector, like other photo detectors uh, to be characterized as well, they still will need the OE detector. Why? Because you need to have a reference. And this OE mod uh, detector from Android Zoo Again, as I told you, comes with the silver image of the NIST standards, so that means the traceability is there. This becomes the reference for any of the photo detector kind of measurements. 
So moving on, uh, uh, we will today show you how to characterize first an EO. So that means we do not know uh, the characteristics of this EO modulator. So we are going to characterize this EO modulator using our uh, silver standard uh, image uh, like the X2P file of this guy because we already have it. It, it comes in a standard pen drive like this when you buy this OE detector. We have already calibrated the VNA because I didn't uh, want to waste a lot of time doing the calibration, doing the open short load and then doing it through. So I've already done the calibration. So that means I have the CHX file, the calibration file of this guy. I have the S2P file of this. Now uh, using these two, I can actually characterize my uh, EO uh, modulator as well. And, 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 and that makes a lot of sense as well. Why? Because as you can see, the path is that the RF travels from the VNA, so this port is transmitting uh, the, the RF, it goes inside the modulator. You have a laser section and a, like a modulator section inside. So then the mod, uh, modulated output, uh, optical output uh, signal comes out, it goes through the cable, then it goes into a reference uh, photo detector. And then this photo detector converts uh, the optical to electrical and then electric signal travels back to the VNA. So for the VNA, he's only seeing RF out and RF in. But then you have two domains in between. So basically what we can do is because VNA uh, has the capacity to de-embed things, so we can actually, through the entire response, and I'll show you how the entire response looks, and then we de-embed this, and then we take care of the RF cal because it's off, already calibrated. So if we de-embed uh, these two things, then the end response is just off the EO modulator. Likewise, when we have calibrated or we have found out the characteristics of the EO modulator, we can save the S2P file. Now this silver image has been, uh, or, or the traceability has come to the EO side, right? Now, in the next step, if you want to characterize any of your own photo detectors or ROSA kind of devices, you can disconnect these two ports, take this out, and then put your own photo detector in place of this standard photo detector. Now because you have the S2P file of that, you have the RF cal of that, now you can de-embed these two and then the response will be of your photo detector. Again, the NIST traceability is going to be there because in the initial step, you characterize your EO modulator using the NIST OE photo detector from us. So this is going to be the workflow of my uh, demo today. Uh, both these things, like the EO modulators and the OE photo detectors, they come in various configurations. Like this, this particular photo detector works only on one wavelength, but we do have models in which this, uh, like, like the same photo detector, can work on different wavelengths as well, and they can go up to 110 gigahertz. So, if you want to uh, know more information about this OE module or the EO modulator, please go to our website and check out the Ambitsu latest ON solution. Moving forward, uh, uh, when I do the measurements, first I'll uh, characterize the EO modulator. So when you go onto the vector star GUI, uh, what happens is you have something called as a measurement. So you go onto the measurement menu and you have something called as perform optical measurements because we are playing into two domains, so we have to have this result. So perform optical measurement, it, it gives you three uh, parameters. One is the EO measurement, that just in case you want to test something that converts uh, electrical signal to an optical signal. Then you have the OE measurements, uh, that is something that takes optical input and converts back into electrical, which are basically the receiver side. And then the third menu is for the OO measurement. That means uh, uh, if you want to characterize just this cable or the response of this cable, you can de-embed this, you can de-embed this, and this is already taken care. So you will have only the response of the OO. So without wasting any more time, let's let's make an EO measurement. I have the S2P file which is supplied by the vendor, which is ended to from our side. We, I, I already have the file. I have done the RF cal for this. So I go on to EO measurement. This is a beautiful menu because it's so so easy to understand uh, that the user just reads the menu and he understands what's going on. So the port selection for the EO is port one. I click that. Then it, it's gonna ask me for selecting the RF cal of this guy. So I've already done the calibration, so I'm just gonna recall that RF cal file. 
and then select OE characterization file which is here in, in the pen drive. So I go to browse, I go to this pen drive and I select H50 nanometers. Now once these two files are selected, the only thing left now is to actually de-embed the response and see it. So I press done and when the done is done, you, you get a measurement that the, uh, you get a me uh, message that the EO measurement is completed. So I click OK. Now I go on to S21 response and uh, I am seeing the log magnitude here. So I go to scale. Uh, I go to scale and I just auto scale it. So now you can see that I am getting a response of the EO modulator, right? Now what we need to do is we need to save that file because at the end of the day, we need to characterize another OE detector. So the EO side is uh, like the measurement is done. So I go to file, I'll uh, save the data because remember we need to save the data because that has magnitude and phase, right? So I do that again, I go back to desktop and I save that as EO.S2B. I save that file. Now what I'll do is, uh, I have characterized the EO modulator, right? Now I don't have a photo detector right now to actually uh, remove this standard photo detector and put it back. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to consider this as my DUT, right? I'm going to characterize this OE detector with the EO detector that I just characterized. I have the RF cal of that. I'll have the S2P file of this guy. I will now see the response of only the EO. Now you will ask me that, how do I validate that? Now for the validation, the thing is that remember, I already have the S2P file of this guy supplied by the vendor. I mean, uh, Anritsu already in that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the stored results which are coming in the USB and then the results or the measurement that I'm going to do right now, the actual measurement. So I'm going to overlay both these things and if they do a perfect match, that means the results are good. So let me do that. I've done, uh, I've, I've saved the S2P file of that. I go back to measurement. I again do a perform optical measurements. Now this time I want to do an OE measurement. So I click on the OE measurement. I select the EO port. Yes, the OE port is port two. I do that. Uh, it asks me to uh, again recall the uh, the RF cal for this. So I recall that. Now it asks me to input the S2P file of the EO modulator. Now sometimes what happens is that people directly start with characterizing a photo detector. But for characterizing a photo detector, you need a characterized source as well. So in that case, if you have not already characterized a particular modulator, it could be any modulator. In this case, it's ours, but it could be yours as well. So in case you haven't characterized, even in this step, you can first measure the EO response, it will store the S2P file and import it directly. But in this case, we have already characterized, so we are going to go browse, we go back to desktop, and then we just recall the EO.S2P. I do that and I say done. Now when I press done, it takes only a couple of seconds to say, okay, OE measurement is completed, and I press okay, now you can see the response. So let's go to scale, auto scale, and this is the response that I'm getting with, this, um, with the measurement of the photo detector. So it's sweeping, it's pretty smooth, Right now, what I'll do is because I want to do a compare. I want to compare the standard uh, supplied file, and then I want to compare it with the actual measurement that I just did. So what I'm I'm going to do is I'm going to go to channel. I'm going to sweep. I go to hold function and I hold the sweep. So that means now the VNA is not sweeping. Whatever the measurement I'm just doing right here, it's 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 in hold condition. Now I go to file. And now I recall the data of the 850 nanometer photo detector, which is in this pen drive. I do that, and when I click OK, you can see it's a perfect match. So they are actually uh, overriding each other, right? Just to let you know that they are actually overriding, instead of the whole condition, I just do continue, and you'll see that they are a perfect match. There's a little noise. A little noise and that is because of maybe some mismatches happening here but 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 it, it's really really good so now we have characterized 
another OE detector, right? In this case, I just reused it, but you could very well use another OE detector, right? Uh, now, the third measurement that we want to do is, okay, I have the S2P file of this guy, I have the S2P file of that guy, I have the RF cal for this, can I see the OO response as well? The answer to your question is yes. I go to measurement, I go to perform optical measurement, and this time I perform the OO measurement. If I go on to the OO measurement, again, it asks me the same questions. Give me the cal file of the VNA, so I supply that. It asks me to give me the uh, uh, S2P file for the OE, I go to the remote of this, and then I select the 850 nanometers, and then it asks me to give me the file of the EO modulator as well. So I go there, I go to desktop, I go to the EO, and I select that, and now I press done. Now the measurement is done, and now you can see it's like flat zero line, right? There's this almost no loss. There's a little loss at the higher frequencies going up to 40 gigahertz, and again, it could be because of some dirt or the connection are a little loose, right? Now let me show you, now, now we have de-embedded the response of all the three and then we are getting that, right? But with our wizard, you have the flexibility that you can actually switch the de-embedding on and off. So if I do the on, you will see that there's a huge loss and then this line is like around minus 62, and goes up to minus 82, right? But if I go back to the measurement menu and I make it to on, you would see that it goes back to zero again, right? So it, it, it gives you a very good idea as to what is happening when you are de-embedding the response of different domains, right? So this is what we wanted to show you. In case uh, you have some questions about the EO modulator, uh, because I know a lot of time people have a lot of questions on the bias of the modulator, the VOA of the modulator, and sometimes how, how is the biasing done in the photo detector as well. Then if you have any sort of those questions, we can take them offline. Uh, you can drop me an email. My, my email ID is navneet.kitaria at andritsu.com. Or you can drop me an email or you can ping me whenever you want. In case you uh, want to send your DUTs to us, uh, to characterize that uh, whether things really work or not so we can do that for you as well so yeah uh, that's what we wanted to show you today and uh, thank you so much for tuning in uh, we'll see you again bye